Guitar Heroes, Eric Andreas, your Guitar Sage here, and today I'm going to show you how to find the chords that you're looking for for songwriting. Now, I'm going to be approaching this with two basic theory tools. Now, don't let that, that word scare you because I promise you, you're going to get this. There's nothing hard about this. But these two theory rules are really going to help you to understand how chords work in all keys. And it's going to help you to understand how to have the choices to go where you want to go in a song. For instance, if you want to make the song uh, take a serious turn for the bridge or something, or, uh, or to, to become happy during the chorus or something like that. I can show you how to do that with understanding this bit about chords. And there's really two things that you need to know, and I'm going to go over those, okay? So, let's talk about, uh, first off, let's talk about like 30,000 foot view. When we're, we're talking about songwriting on the guitar, um, you know, what most people do is they just pick up the guitar and they play a few of those chords that they love all the time, right? What I call the nine essential chords, right? There's G, C, D, E minor, A, D, D minor, A minor, E major. Um, and we can even throw some seventh chords and that sort of thing like that in there. But these basic open chords are the chords that people use a lot because they work in a couple different keys a lot, okay? So, most of the time, people will play in the key of G and C because they're so closely related that there's only a few chords that change, and they're just the easiest keys, typically, to play in. Now, with all that being said, we're trying to break out of that, right? We're trying to break out of just playing the G and the D and the C, even though a million songs have been written on those with those chords, okay? So here are the two things that one needs to know if we want to do more than just kind of strumming and singing without thinking too much, without, you know, just kind of happening upon a song. And that's a great way to write too. But I'm telling you, if you're trying to break out of writing the same stuff all the time, because you're going to probably gravitate to the same patterns and what have you, this is how to do it. And the two things that you need to know are this. You need to know the major scale, super easy. You don't even need to memorize it. I'm going to tell it to you here in just a moment. And then you need to know what chords represent which note. Now, what do you mean by that, Eric? Well, what I mean by that is the major scale, you've heard it before, also known as the diatonic scale, is diatonic harmony is based on the major scale, and the chords are constructed according to the intervals, the distances between notes in the major scale. Now, I know for some of you that's way too much theory and I'm already freaking you out. Don't worry about it. You don't even need to know that other than just know that the chords come from the major scale, okay? And the minor scale comes from the major scale. And the modes come from the major scale. Everything comes from the major scale, okay? So, Two things you need to know, you need to, know, need to know the major scale and you need to know which notes are represented by each number, okay? There's many, many different ways that I could be teaching this and I teach this all throughout my courses and my free course, everything else. In fact, if you need more on this major scale, um, check out the free course below, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. All right, let's look at this major scale. So basically, a major scale is when we take any note doesn't matter, whatever the first note is, that's your key or tonal center. And every song has a tonal center, unless it's atonal music, which very rarely would anybody listen to that, okay? People do it, but it's rare. There's not a radio station with atonal music. It sounds not very good, okay? Okay, so, here we go. We're starting on a G here, okay? And if we wanted to play a major scale, we're gonna say whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half. So that's the first thing you need to know is the distance between one fret and the next is a half step. And two half steps make a whole step, okay? So if we know that, then we can take this pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and that creates every single major scale under the sun on every instrument since the beginning of time until the end of time, amen. Okay, that's all you need to know as far as the major scale. So for instance, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Watch, we'll take any note. I'm gonna take a B. I don't even have to know that that's a B to play this major scale. It'll be a B major scale because I'm starting on the B, but we don't even have to know that. So we're playing this scale, and we're gonna say whole, whole, half. You say it as you're moving, by the way. Whole, 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 half. 
and that's a B major scale. Pretty cool, right? You may not think that that's very helpful, but I promise it's the baseline of everything that we're going to be discussing regarding theory, okay? So you know that now. Now, we can get in the habit of just saying these numbers in the key. Well, let's go back to the key of G here, and we'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. Now, it seems very natural in your ear. That's why when you start strumming chords, you typically will grab the ones that are in that particular key, and when you're humming a melody, you'll typically hum the melody of the key that you're in. So unbeknownst to you, you already know all this to some degree. You know it from a surface level where you're singing uh, in the right key and you're playing some of the chords in the right key and that sort of thing, but you may not know where to go from there. That's why we're going to make this bigger so we can, it, we can get to all those other cool chords, okay? So, so, we got, so we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Now, without getting into a bunch of theory, which I teach a ton of, I'm going to show you the short version here because I know you want the answer right away. For some of you that want to dig deeper, I've got tons of videos for you here on YouTube and yourguitarstage.com slash 30 and even more than that, the unstoppable guitar system. So if you want to dig in, I got what you need. Otherwise, we're going to scratch the surface here. Okay, so we got our, our notes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Okay. Now, the way the chords stack up in a major key are major one. Minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, diminished seven, don't even worry about that chord, and back to our one again. So we have seven chords, seven specific chords, some of them, um, well, we have seven, seven specific chords, right? And, but three chord families represented. We have major, minor, and diminished. Okay, now most of y'all know major and minor, but you don't know the diminished. A diminished chord, and I'm gonna confuse some of you, so I'm gonna skip over this really quickly. A diminished chord is a minor chord with a flatted five. If you don't understand that, don't worry about it, because we're not even gonna be talking about the diminished chord for this. We're taking the diminished chord out because 99 times out of 100, when you hear a hit song on the radio, it does not contain the diminished chord. That's okay if you wanna throw them in there. I love diminished chords, and I put them in all sorts of songs that I write. but. For the most part, we don't use them. Major and minor chords are really what you need to know in, regard, in regards to this shortcut and finding all these great chords that we need, okay? So we just need to know one through six now. So major one, minor two, you should probably be writing these down as well as the whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half, or WWH, WWWH. That's how you wanna spell out your major scales and you always start with the first note and then you say, whole step, okay? A lot of people will say whole step. Well, that, you hadn't moved yet. That's just your first note. You say the whole step. The whole step's a movement, so you say it when you move. Okay, so whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, or WWH, WWWH. Write that down, okay? Now, the chords. Now, do this. Write down one through seven, and right underneath those numbers, write number one is major, two and three, both minor. Four and five are major, six is minor, and seven is diminished, okay? But we're not gonna be talking about the diminished, so I'm gonna stop talking about it right now, okay? So we just need to know one through, one through six. So we got major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, okay? Now, someone may say, yeah, but what about that song that has a major two in it? Yes, there are chords that every now and then borrow, they're called borrowed chords uh, in classical theory, we call them borrowed chords, because basically we're borrowing them from another key. They suggest another key sometimes. And we can look at this as an equivalent to, if I'm talking right now about chords for songs, and if I were to change the subject immediately in what we're talking about here, and I started talking about cars, it would be very strange. You'd turn the video off and you'd say, I'm never watching that guy again because I went down a rabbit hole, okay? Now, when we change keys, that's basically what's happening, unless we do it very convincingly. When we borrow a chord for while that chord is playing, essentially, we're changing the subject, the musical subject, and it will catch listeners' ears off 
a bit, and it also will catch their attention because they're like, why is that change? Why is that not what I'm used to? So we can use this idea, this idea of borrowed chords, which we're not getting into in this video, but we could use this idea to make chords even more interesting yet. Beatles did this a lot. A ton of people do this, okay? Um, Beatles, uh, Beatles, I said the Beatles, Beach Boys, a lot of 60s music does this. Uh, all right, so without further ado, we're not going to get into borrowed chords, but what happens is the major scale dictates these chords the way I've told you. Major one, minor two, minor three, major four, major five, minor six, okay? This is why we can take hundreds or thousands of songs, millions of songs probably, that just have these chords in it, okay? Now, let's talk about this real quick. You play songs um, in the key of G, right? You got a lot of G, E minor, C, D, right? There's a million songs like that. And they can do these different orders, doesn't matter. But that's a, mi that's a major one, minor six, major four, major five. Okay, now, you can take, or let me tell you the chords in order of usage throughout the history of music, okay? And I know this without a shadow of a doubt just because I've played so many millions of songs and unless I've just played uh, the, the, the few ten thousands of songs that I know that I've played, um, let's just say I happened on just a certain sect of them that were completely wrong. Well, that's not the case. These are just pop songs, rock songs from all different genres and they all come up with this pattern, okay? So I know this intrinsically. I know this, is that the word I'm looking for? I know this from, from a core level because I've played so many songs, okay? What you're gonna find is so many songs use these chords. First, you have to have a one chord, okay? The one chord you can think of as your home bass. So if I go... You know that feeling at the end of a song or at the end of a piece when they're doing when they're playing classical music and they're like you know or some sort of cadence at the end that makes it really you know that it's the end, right? Well, the re that's the reason that that chord sounds so strong and so coming back home and this is the end of the song and what have you is because that's the one chord. And so if you will, if we had a speech, it would be the subject of our speech. It would be our thesis at the beginning of the, of the speech and at the end of the speech. And all the chords in between would point back to our thesis. If they don't, then we've got a problem, okay? Either in our speech or in our song. So, with all that being said, the one chord is the most important chord. If you don't have the one chord, you don't really have a song. You gotta come back to the one chord eventually. This is true for 99.9999999% of the songs out there. So, yes, there's always an exception. Don't bust my balls over that, okay? There's always an exception. We're not talking about the exception. We're talking about the other bazillion songs that you're gonna play where you have a one chord, okay? Now, with that being said, we got a one chord, right? The next most important chord is the five chord, okay? So a million songs have been just written with G and D, you know, or C and F, you know? So lots and lots of songs that just have the five chord. So the one chord is first, the five chord would be next in order of usage and in order of importance, if you will. Uh, the four chord would be next. Uh, oftentimes the four chord, will lead to a five chord, and the five chord will lead to a one chord, okay? The next most important chord is the six minor. The majority of the hit songs since the beginning of time have contained a one, minor six, four, and five. Okay, and a million others, okay? So one, five, four, minor six, okay? The next two would be the minor two and the minor three, probably in that order of how I've, I've seen them the most, okay? Uh, the minor two and the minor three don't occur too often, but when they do, they occur more than the seven chord. So these are chords that you can use, my friend. You can, you can determine this for any key, it doesn't matter. But let me give you a little secret here. The majority of, of all songs 
can be put, I say the majority, all songs can be put in the feel of G or C. And what I mean by that is that this is the feel of G where I have G and a C and a D and an E minor and an A minor, right? Then I can just use my capo, move that around and still, you know, if I wanted to play in the feel of G, but I'm in the key of A, then I'm just gonna put my capo on fret two and now I'm playing all those chords in a new key, but it's still the same feel. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, you need to be watching that free series. So much of this stuff that I talk about, I'm assuming you, you know some bit about guitar, some bit about theory. If you don't, then every video would be a beginner's video and it would be very upsetting to intermediate, intermediate and advanced players. So watch that free series, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. Watch it, watch it, watch it, it's free. Or visit me here in Nashville, it'll take 30 weeks and about 900 bucks and um, and actually it'll cost a lot more than that. So do that, watch it for free, or come visit me here in Nashville. In the same studio, I'll teach you the same things, okay? So with our capo, and I teach that in that free course, uh, we can change keys very easily. But the two easiest keys are G and C. But with the use of the capo, we can move everything around, keep them in those keys, and use our same basic chords all the time, okay? So just to make this really quickly for you, you gotta know the major scale which is covered in the free ebook at yourguitarsage.com and also in the free course at yourguitarsage.com slash 30. I'm telling you, if you turn this video off and you don't open up another tab and open that free series, I don't know what you're gonna do. You're gonna, you're gonna keep fumbling along, okay? Fumbling. Uh, you gotta learn this stuff, okay, eventually. And it's easy stuff. I make it so easy. You gotta learn it. It's gonna make things, you ever had anybody show you something that you've been doing wrong your whole life and you go, dear God, that's so much easier. Why didn't I learn that a long time ago? This course, it's free, okay? So uh, we're in the key of G. I'll just show you these chords really quickly so that you have them since they're the most common. Uh, the key of G would be G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor. Okay, we're not, not including the seventh chord. If we were in the key of C, we'd have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor. So a lot of the same chords again, right? Now we could get into the other keys, but again, now we're now we're not we're not using association to remember this stuff. So G and C is the easiest. You got to know how to spell out the major scale. Okay, you don't need to know the names of the notes, but you do need to be able to to say whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half and be able to, to play your, your scale. Then you need to know that the chords go major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. If you don't know that, then you're not gonna know where the chords are at all the time. This works for every key since the beginning of time, amen. Now, if you wanna really quickly, let me double your knowledge here. If you want to write a song in a minor key, it's the six. The six minor is the tonal center for a minor song, okay? Now most people, uh, thinking theoretically, they'll say they'll say that's a one, a minor one, and then they'll reconstruct the chords accordingly. I'm saying just think like you're in the major key, make make the six minor your tonal center, play a lot of minor chords and what have you, and it's going to sound minor. If you're starting off with that chord and ending on that chord and playing a lot of minor stuff, it's going to sound minor. Okay, if you're playing a bunch of major chords, it's going to sound major. My friends, I could tell you a lot more, but. We gotta, lay, we gotta save that for other videos and the courses and the free course below. So please, friends, let me know how I can help you. Hit thumbs up if this video helped you. Hit subscribe if you wanna know how to play guitar and not play like uh, Lil Wayne or something. You know, if you really wanna play guitar, get that free series below. Hit subscribe, leave your comments below. My friends, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all those places. I do live broadcasts all the time, all the time, giving tons of stuff away, thousands of dollars worth of guitars, courses and everything every single month. Every single month? Yeah, every single month. Um, yeah, I had to think about that for a minute. Yes, every single month. So join me, yourguitarstage.com slash live. Uh, what else? The free course, you got that. What else? Tons of stuff. I got tons of stuff for you, books and everything else. But I can't tell you about it all in this video. You gotta be associated with me. We gotta be friends, man. All right, hey, as always, be kind to all beings. Don't trust the man and practice that guitar. I'll see you. Get the course, bye.